Good morning and welcome to Health Talk, sponsored by Mon General Hospital. This program is designed to provide education on vital health topics to help you take charge of your health. You'll also be introduced to Mon General's committed physicians, allied healthcare professionals, and quality programs and services. And now, here are your Health Talk hosts, Kay Murray and Jim Stallings. I'm Jim. She's Kay. Good morning, I'm Kay. Kay. Good and morning, James. This is Health Talk. We meet every Thursday morning at 835 with the doctors from Mon General Hospital. And today, our doctor is Dr. Ghassan Kanj. And we're going to be talking today about the electromagnetic navigation bronchoscopy now available at Mon General Hospital. And uh, good morning to you, first of all. Thank you. Good morning for good having to, me. Good to be on the show. Uh, good to have you on the show with us today. So, obviously, we need to know what this machine is. Kay's going to call it what? The I'm going to call it the ENB. Okay. The electronic navigation bronchoscopy. That's right. What does it do? Number one, it makes my life easier to call it the ENB. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first thing I want to say, actually, is that I always thought that uh, work at a radio station would be much more relaxed, that, you know, if you didn't shave, it's okay, that uh, you could even work in your PJs. But now everybody is taping interviews, so I'm sorry for you guys. Uh, your life is getting Thank you for that, doctor, because I'm not happy about it. You know, we used to be able to lay back and be real comfortable here, but uh, we'll get through it. Yeah, look who has a sports jacket on. Uh, those of you who watch the video, you'll see. Yeah, how unusual is that? Yeah, it is. It's <laughs> radio. We have a face for radio. That's right? right. So what is the ENB? What does it do exactly? Well, to start with, uh, we do something called the bronchoscopy, uh, which is visualization uh, of the airways of the lungs from the inside of the airways. It's like inspection of, you know, the ducts of your uh, AC at home. And we do that uh, using a device which is called the bronchoscope, which, uh, which is a, a flexible tube. Uh, with a diameter of around a quarter an inch, and it's around two feet long. And uh, this we use to uh, look for abnormalities inside the airways, uh, as well as to sometimes do therapeutic uh, procedures like uh, aspiration of blood or secretions. So now we have uh, a new technology uh, that uses uh, electromagnetic waves, which are the same as radio waves, uh, to allow us to uh, reach areas in the lung which are beyond our visual field. So this is just used for the lung? For the time being, uh, this technology assists the uh, scope, which is we, – we use scopes in, in many other uh, systems, like when we do uh, – Investi- uh, inspection of the stomach, for example, or of the intestines, we use the scopes. For the time being, this technology is being used specifically uh, in the lungs, but I expect this to expand uh, in the future. Okay. Is this a treatment for people that may have lung cancer? For the time being, uh, it is mainly for investigation and uh, try to make diagnoses uh, on abnormalities that we find on x-rays and CAT scans of the, of the chest. So what kind of conditions would a patient present in order for you to use this as a diagnostic tool? Uh, number, number one, uh, we don't want to create a need for this technology. What we want to use this technology for is to make it easier on the patients and to cut down on the need for more invasive procedures. So, for example, uh, if someone has what they refer to as a spot on the lung, which we refer to as a nodule or a mass, uh, the usual is to try to do a routine bronchoscopy or to use a needle uh, guided by a CAT scan or sometimes have to go with uh, an open surgery. So now we have another tool that allows us to do this investigation uh, less invasively and hopefully more successful. So it's better for the patient. It's going to be less trauma for the for the patient. I guess we should say thank you to everyone that went to the ball of the year this year because that is what helped pay for this. I really want to thank everybody and uh, 
unfortunately, I wasn't uh, there this year. But uh, that's all right. Other people did. Often. And uh, that's what that's what they do. And we talk about ball of the year every year. Now we can see what they do with that money. Do you enter or look into the lungs with a Bronco scope the same way you do with an ENB? I mean, uh, how do you go about performing this procedure? Okay, so the ENB uh, supplements a regular bronchoscopy, and the way it is is, uh, as I mentioned, the bronchoscope. Uh, has a diameter of around quarter an inch. And in that quarter an inch, uh, we have crammed a tiny camera, we have a light source, and we have also a channel uh, that will allow us to perform procedures. So you can imagine that there are limits as to how small the scope can be. Now, on the other hand, as we navigate through the different branches as the airways branch out they get narrower and narrower so there will be a point where the tip of the scope will be uh, fitting snugly and we cannot go beyond beyond a certain uh, branch so this this is when we have to uh, pass this electromagnetic navigation the ENB uh, it has a probe which is really an antenna uh, uh, and the, re- the reason I use the term antenna is some people refer to this as lung GPS. And uh, as you probably know, a GPS, which is what we use in our uh, cars or we have on our smartphones, is a combination of a digital map and a receiver that detects signals that come from satellites or from a, uh, cell phone towers. So in this procedure, what we have is a probe which is skinny enough that we can pass it through the channel in the scope. And this probe works as the antenna for a GPS system. And for the satellites, we substitute the satellites with uh, tiny transmitters that we wrap around the chest. And this way, we can uh, monitor where this probe is going. I see. So it's uh, it's it's communicating with the things that are wrapped around our chest, and it, it sees what's in the path between the end of the ENB and the transmitters or the receivers on our chest. Exactly. And so, so you can see, do you see a 3D or a 2D image of what's in there? This is a very good question. What it is is... Uh, as I mentioned, the GPS is a combination of a digital map and a receiver. So what we do is we generate a uh, 3D map of the lung from images obtained uh, from a CAT scan of the chest. So these images uh, are uh, processed by the computer system that comes with the ENB, and it generates this three-dimensional tree, and then... Uh, by uh, superimposing the, uh, this map and uh, the patient's chest, we can uh, navigate through the lungs the same way as when you are driving, you can uh, see, a, for example, a, an arrow on your GPS that's supposed to coincide with the road. So you can see an anomaly in the smallest Capillaries. Well, actually, what will happen is not uh, seeing uh, directly. What it is is we would have uh, appointed a certain target on the CAT scan. And now what we will do is try to reach that target almost blindly using uh, the ENB technology. Wow. You know, we're asking fantastic questions today, but if we're not asking the question you want to know the answer to, then call us at 304-296-0041. It's Health Talk brought to you by Mon General Hospital. Dr. Ghassan Kanj is our guest. He is a pulmonary critical care physician at Mon General Hospital, and we'll return right after this. This is Mon General's Health Talk. If you have a health-related question, call us now at 304-296-0041. This program, live on WAJR, Thursday mornings at 8.35. It's also videotaped to put up on the Mon General website, and you can see past shows on there 
at your leisure. Now, this show will be available very soon with Dr. Ghassan Kanj, and uh, the reason I bring this up is we're going to show you some illustrations in this segment on the camera that obviously you won't be able to see on the radio, but we'll describe it for you on the radio. And the question is, uh, when you're sending a, a, the Bronco scope down there, and then the way you describe it, the, the electromagnetic navigation bronco, bronchoscope inside <laughs> that scope... How are you entering the lungs? What's your path? Okay. Well, uh, we can do this procedure uh, in different settings. Uh, bronchoscopy itself can be done at the bedside, uh, especially in, uh, uh, for patients who are, for example, in the intensive care unit. But most bronchoscopies are performed in either an operating room or a bronco bronchoscopy suite. And also the anesthesia uh, used uh, for this procedure can range from topical anesthesia that's applied to the nose and the throat and all the way to having general anesthesia with muscle paralysis. That's if you want to stay awake during the procedure. I don't know who would want to do that, but exactly some people. I, I prefer well, What's the other kind? I'd like to go to sleep if that's okay. <laughs> we'll accommodate you for that. Okay. Uh, hopefully you will not need it, however. Now, uh, so for the most uh, outpatient uh, procedures, uh, the scope is introduced either through the nose and then to the throat. And uh, for those who will be uh, seeing the video, I have a demonstration here. So we'll go through the nose and then we'll uh, pass the scope into the throat and then we'll uh, examine the vocal cords, spray them with numbing medicine, and from there on will enter into the main windpipe and then into the different branches of the windpipe. When a patient is receiving general anesthesia, then uh, there will be a breathing tube which will bypass the nose and will bypass the vocal cords. So we will go through the breathing tube and we'll enter into the main windpipe and from there on into the different branches of the lungs. All right. It's been suggested that I should have my vocal cords numbed for many years now. So mm -hmm. I guess you're the guy who I would see to do that. Why do you <laughs> numb the vocal cords? Well, obviously, uh, they are a very sensitive uh, area and this is a protective mechanism for us to cough anything that uh, we may uh, by mistake uh, get into our lungs so this protects our lungs so in order for the procedure to be done without a lot of discomfort and cough the vocal cords will have to be numb one way or another as i mentioned either topically or if the patient under general anesthesia then there is no need for numbing the vocal cords at the time. what are the risks if any okay well uh there's there is no doubt that uh, there is always potential for risk in any medical procedure. Mm -hmm. And uh, my advice has always been do not pierce your ears unless you really have to. Uh, the main risks are not necessarily related to the uh, electromagnetic navigation, but rather to the uh, bronchoscopy procedure. And again, this includes uh, num uh, uh, potential for risk from uh, anesthesia itself as well as from the procedure. And generally, uh, the risks uh, are uh, increasing as, as we get more invasive and if we want to take uh, biopsies, uh, as well as, obviously, uh, with the patient's uh, comorbid conditions. And it's unfortunate that uh, most of the individuals uh, who have to have such procedures are uh, already at, uh, at an age where the risk increases and also would be individuals who have had uh, conditions uh, that predispose them to uh, s risks and side effects. Does this require an overnight stay in the hospital? Most of the time, no. Most of the time this uh, is performed uh, in an outpatient uh, surgical setting and uh, if the patient comes in in the morning, uh, uh, they should be able to go home uh, by the afternoon, provided someone will be driving them home. And did the uh, ENB come with an owner's manual? How did, how did the staff at Bonjetto get up to speed on how to use this? Special training. Some studying involved? Yes. Now, this is the issue about 
the, those of us who have been uh, out of training for uh, long enough time that we don't get to uh, experience this uh, during during our uh, training as physicians. So uh, there was uh, training sessions. There were training sessions uh, that we had to go and uh, attend uh, initially uh, at the manufacturer's uh, headquarters. And then uh, after training there, uh, when we come and start doing this here, uh, there are individuals uh, who are uh, experienced in doing this who come and assist us with the first few uh, procedures. And uh, from there on, it's like any other medical procedure. We just uh, get uh, familiar with it. That must be pretty exciting, though, when you get a new piece of equipment and get to learn how to use it, and then you try it for the first time. Um, I would imagine you've had a patient or two uh, to use this on already? Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely, and it's something that we have been uh, looking for for a long time. This is not very new, but relatively uh, in terms of, uh, if you put it in perspective, it is uh, a new technology. We invite your phone calls at 304-296-0041. We'll get your call in during the next segment here on Health Talk, brought to you by Mon General. Pulmonary critical care physician Dr. Ghassan Kanj is our guest this morning, and we'll be back right after this. This is Mon General's Health Talk, providing the information you need to take charge of your health. Call us now with your health-related questions at 304-296-0041. Every year, Mon General Hospitals Foundation holds the ball of the year. And those of you that attended last year, well, now you can see what you've purchased. It is a, an, an electromagnetic navigation bronchoscopy. And with us is pulmonary critical care physician, Dr. Ghassan Kanj. And so uh, where do you go from here as far as uh, uh, when it comes to the lungs at Mon General Hospital? Obviously, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, when we have this uh, new technology and new equipment, we don't want to create a need for it. However, uh, the national trend currently is to uh, screen for lung cancer. So uh, we are in the final stages of... Uh, a, uh, of making a program uh, at Mon General Hospital to uh, assist with this situation. And I am hoping that this technology will be uh, instrumental in this program and it will enable us to uh, diagnose and rule out lung cancers uh, on suspicious uh, uh, imaging studies and it will cut down on the need for more invasive and uh, more risky uh, procedures. So all the various doctors are, are part of a team? Yes, it's a multidisciplinary uh, team uh, that, work, that works to get together uh, to uh, help uh, make this diagnosis or hopefully in more situations rule it out. But there will always be abnormalities on imaging studies that, that will need to be deciphered. And uh, this, as I said, hopefully will, will make that uh, a simpler and uh, safer procedure. All right. And this book that you held up earlier in the program, where can we get a copy? No, I don't want a copy of that. <laughs> I was going to say, do you really want a copy? It's very colorful. But I used to enjoy the World Book Encyclopedia, the part about the human body. They used to have the, the transparent pages in there where you could... You ever see that before, the World oh, Book yeah, Encyclopedia? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. It probably taught us a lot. Probably taught you a lot more than it taught me. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on Thank the program you. today. Thank you uh, for having me. Certainly appreciate it. That's Dr. Ghassan Kanj. And, again, he's a pulmonary critical care physician at Mon General Hospital. 